Hello and welcome everyone and thank you for participating in this webinar offered by the European School Education Platform, the European Commission's platform for school education in Europe. Uh, my name is Maria Lena and I will be coordinating today's webinar. So for this webinar we have invited Florian Nuxel. Uh, he's an educator and a researcher based in Tübingen in Germany. Uh, and uh, there he teaches English and political sciences uh, in the secondary grade. So he has a strong interest around uh, AI and uh, using AI as a teaching facilitator. And today he will help us uh, to reflect on uh, the different uh, possibilities that AI offers and to teachers and particularly to how we can teach languages with the help of AI. Uh, before we begin, and before I give the floor to Florian, I would like to remind you that uh, towards the end uh, of this webinar, uh, we will share with you an evaluation form, uh, which we will kindly invite you to fill in. And finally, we invite you to share any thoughts, questions, concerns uh, through the chat. And we will have a short Q&A session towards the end of the webinar, where we will try to reply to all of your questions. So thank you very much. And uh, Florian, uh, the floor is yours. Yes. You can start staring your screen if you want also. Yeah, thank you very much. And while I guess I'm still hearing some binging from people who are still logging on, welcome from my side as well. Um, I think we have a few seconds, minutes before everyone is here, and I would like to use that time to find out a little bit about you. I'm going to share my screen because I've prepared a very short Menti questionnaire. And if you have the possibility, to log on to um, a, from a different browser or from a mobile phone. Oops, sorry, I need to get you back here. Uh, I would like you to go to menti.com. You see that here and enter 16083689 and then start with your country you're from. Just give me the uh, letters, the uh, international question. Let's see, should be working. Let's see whether you are able to join once the first person has entered, I am happy. Yes, it seems to be working. So we have someone from Hungary, Belgium. I just saw Bel um, Poland is there as well. Um, I wait, oh, I am waiting for like about 20 seconds. Uh, the first uh, questionnaire is not that important. It's just in order to find out uh, First thing is to find out whether you're able to enter Menti. The next question will be more important uh, in according to AI. So with the size of a country, we can see that uh, there are more people from Italy, Greece, Spain, Turkey here. But as you can see, we have participants from all over Europe, which is really nice. I will switch to my second um, Menti questionnaire. Um, and this is helpful for me in order to find out how much knowledge you already have when it comes to ChatGPT and other AI tools. So the next questionnaire should be here. Simple yes or no question. Have you ever tried ChatGPT yourself? Well, most of you have, but we have several people who haven't used it yet. Um, and the next question now is, whether I have three statements and you can strong, strongly disagree or strongly agree or anything between that. AI has already had an impact on my teaching. AI scares me and I don't know anything about AI. OK, so some people have not used AI in the language classroom already. Some people have tried it. Um, some people all also say that AI is scaring, and I'm, I'm going to show you a few examples today that do seem rather scary uh, when you look at them for the first time. And we have several people who do not, oh no, I uh, don't know anything about AI, strongly disagree. So we do have quite a lot of experts here as well, and I hope I will be able to show you some new aspects of AI today as well. OK, cool. Thank you for your participation. I will now switch off the Menti and then switch to my presentation. Just need a few seconds for that. And Thailand. There it is. Yes. 
You should be able to see my screen now. If not, let me know via the chat and I'll get the chat to my other window. Good. So today we are going to talk about AI in the foreign language classroom. And um, I started, oops, I need to share my audio because I'm going to play a video to, for to you in a second. So I'm going to sh uh, talk about several tools today, mainly, of course, ChatGPT. Um, most of us have tried it um, since November last year when it came out, but there are other tools that are interesting for school environment and it's especially for the English language classroom or sorry, not only the English language classroom, but the foreign language classroom. My examples today will be mainly from the English language classroom since English is the only other language I am able to speak, but most of the methods, most of the tools I am going to show you, you can use for all other languages as well. So I will also talk about Synthesia, which is a tool where you can create um, videos with avatars. I talk about uh, creating audio via AI, but we will also have a look at um, picture or image generation that can you can use in your classroom. But I want to start with a video. Oh, is it? Sorry, there it is. I will start with a video. I recorded this video very uh, briefly yesterday, and um, the version the first one is German, and I just played 10 seconds because most of you probably are not able to understand German. Hallo und herzlich willkommen. Ich freue mich, dass Sie heute hier sind in diesem Webinar zum Thema künstliche Intelligenz im Fremdsprachenunterricht. So yesterday I sat in front of the computer, recorded this video and then uploaded the video to HeyGen Labs, which is a new AI that came out more or less one or two weeks ago. And the interesting thing is now I upload the video, I can choose the language. They are not, not every language is available, but Spanish, French, Italian, Polish, and some other languages. And now it will transform my video into a video as if I'm speaking that, lang that language. So it, it is synthesizing my voice and it also adapts my lip movements for this new language. And I saw that we have some people from Poland uh, here today. So the first uh, version of my video, once again, I do not speak Polish, I do not speak French. So the next two videos, this is pure AI. Have a look at my lips. They really match the language. And I think my voice is replicated in a rather good way as well. Cześć i witamy. Miło, że jesteś dzisiaj tutaj na tym webinarium o sztucznej inteligencji w nauczaniu języków obcych. We can switch to French. Cześć i witamy. Oops, Polish again. Bonjour et bienvenue. Ravi que vous soyez ici aujourd'hui dans ce webinaire sur l'IA dans l'enseignement des langues. Nous allons examiner de plus près aujourd'hui. And now, and now the whole video in a language that all of us understand um, in English. Once again, I recorded it in German, and it's the AI that now translated it into English. Hello and welcome. I'm glad you're here today in this webinar on artificial intelligence in foreign language teaching. Today we will examine how to use ChatGPT e.g. to support language teaching and learning, for instance, in educational settings such as schools and language institutes. I recorded this video, which you are currently watching, in German. The system, an AI, synthesized my speech and now adjusts my lip movements to match the language I have set. We will now see how this looks in different languages. The scary thing is, if you showed me this video, um, I wouldn't know that it's not me. I mean, I could try to remember whether I said something like that, but it really replicated my voice rather uh, well, I suppose. So. AI is scary and it's, AI is quite competent already and it will get better and better more or less um, day by day. Um, one thing we have to focus on and that we really have to be aware of is when we work or use AI in school or in the English or in the foreign language classroom, we should always think of a hybrid team. So it's not just the AI, it's working together so it's a co-constructing of products of text between the ai and the teacher and this picture was also created by an by an ai i used midjourney 
And I, it also illustrates rather well that if you have a first look at it, it looks more or less perfect. But if you have a look at it in detail, you see that the AI did make some mistakes. One example is here, there are too many hands. The teacher has three hands and one of the fingers is not really attached to the rest of the hand. And the glasses up here, uh, yeah, there's a mistake as well. So while it is rather shockingly good in some way, there are every now and then also major mistakes. And this is also the case when we talk about text generation. And my thesis is that artificial intelligence has, has the potential to change the education system and specifically the um, foreign language classroom more profoundly than any other innovation since the introduction of compulsory education. So it will have a big impact on teaching and on learning. And um, as you showed me, most of you have used ChatGPT before, but for those of you who haven't really tried it and do not know what kind of results you get, I asked ChatGPT to write a comment about the use of social media. And this is the answer I then got. Social media can be a great way to stay connected with friends and family, discover new information and ideas, and engage with the world around us. However, it is important to remember to use social media responsibly and so on. So I do get a coherent text that does make sense and that is quality wise generally better than what my students produce. And what I then find very interesting, I mean, th this was very um, yeah, general, write a comment. If I now say write it as an enthusiastic fan, I do get a different kind of text. I do get different kind of uh, words uh, that were used and also different kind of grammar. So as an enthusiastic fan, oh my gosh, I just love social media. It's such an amazing way to stay connected with all my friends and so on. So more, the more you um, define the prompt, you could say, write it as a teenager, write it as a depressed teenager, as a happy teenager, and so on. You will always get a different text. And actually, as probably most of you know, if I enter the same prompt again, I will get a different text. So we will never be able um, to find out as a teacher whether a student used AI or not, because it's a specific text every time you ask uh, a text to be produced. And you can combine it with uh, video AI. So at first I'm going to show you several examples and later on I show you how you can use it for learning and teaching. But this was rather remarkable as well. Um, I asked ChatGPT to rewrite this comment as an old person who doesn't like social media and hates dogs. I then used Synthesia.io, which is a, a video AI, chose this avatar. So the person does not exist. I chose this person chose the language, American English, and now um, the text you are going to hear spoken by this old person is AI generated. And what I find rather interesting is how this additional information that he hates dogs is included in the text. So it's not just like an add on that he says, oh, by the way, I hate dogs. Listen carefully how he includes that into his speech. I don't understand what all the fuss is about with these social media sites. In my day, we didn't have all these fancy gadgets and gizmos to keep us constantly connected to the internet. We had real conversations with real people, face to face, and we didn't have to worry about all these privacy issues and online predators. As far as I'm concerned, social media is just a giant waste of time and a breeding ground for all kinds of negativity and drama. And don't even get me started on those ridiculous dog videos that everyone seems to be obsessed with. Dogs are smelly, obnoxious creatures that belong outside, not on my computer screen. I'll stick with my daily crossword puzzle and leave the social media craziness to the young folks. So the topic of dogs is included rather well in a social media context. And also the activities he then mentions, like crossword puzzle, is an activity an old person is doing generally. So if you ask ChatGPT for the same text or another comment uh, by a teenager, the activity that ChatGPT mentions then will not be crossword puzzles. So it's interesting how much um, it's not real knowledge, or how, how good ChatGPT is already in um, pretending 
to be a specific person or to pretend to have knowledge of a specific area of knowledge. Um, I used it also with my year 11. We um, talked about different presidents in the United States. And before that, we, we covered Shakespeare and we did Shakespeare sonnets. And now I asked, oh, the presidents, we will see that later. This is the example where we then asked um, ChatGPT to create or write a, a sonnet about AI. And it's scaringly good. Upon the dawn of intellect's advance, when art and science to new heights do soar, the mind of man doth weave a mystic dance, as AI's grace doth enter classroom's door. No more the sage upon the stage alone, but now a partner in the quest for truth, a digital mentor, knowledge to hone, and guide the eager minds of vibrant youth. In wisdom's quest, these noble minds entwine, the sapient sage and silent silicon, to teach, to learn, to make the darkness shine, and bring forth light where ignorance hath gone. Embrace this union, teacher and machine, together futures bright and bold to glean. So this is rather a utopian version. My students uh, thought it's, it's too optimistic. They then wanted a dystopian version as well. So we switched from the sonnet form. The students analyzed this uh, sonnet and um, then um, decided whether it is in a Shakespearean style or what aspects to show that is Shakespearean and what aspects might not be Shakespearean. But we then also had a limerick write a dystopian limerick about AI in the classroom. And um, I really liked it because both some, uh, both poems then together show also the, the, the areas how AI can influence um, school. On the one hand, positively, but there are some negative aspects we have to consider as well. So now the dystopian limerick. There once was a school that turned gray when AI took the teachers away. No kindness or passion, just cold hard extraction, and the students grew lifeless each day. So it is important to um, emphasize that in the future, a, a school without teachers is a bad school, just like now. But in the future, a school without AI is also a bad school. So we need AI and teachers in a hybrid team working together. So quite often, and then I come to an end with all the examples in a minute. Um, teachers argue, OK, it's, it's all fine. They can create text, but they are not really creative and they cannot really understand and analyze literature or poems um, in this case. Or in this case, it's actually a novel, an extract from a novel. And I want you to judge yourself whether ChatGPT, and it was the version from July, is able to analyze uh, literature. So we have an extract. I'm going to, you don't have to read it now because I'm, I used an AI avatar once again to present this material to you. So we're going to listen to him. He is reading out the, um, the extract. And then in the next step, I asked um, ChatGPT to analyze this um, part, this extract from the novel. Maybe from as early as when you're five or six, there's been a whisper going at the back of your head saying, one day, maybe not so long from now, you'll get to know how it feels. So you're waiting, even if you don't quite know it, waiting for the moment when you realize that you really are different to them, that there are people out there like Madam, who don't hate you or wish you any harm, but who nevertheless shudder at the very thought of you of how you were brought into this world and why, and who dread the idea of your hand brushing against theirs. The first time you glimpse yourself through the eyes of a person like that, it's a cold moment. It's like walking past a mirror you've walked past every day of your life, and suddenly it shows you something else, something troubling and strange. So once again, it's an avatar, it's not a real person. I think the language is, I mean, we can still hear that it's not a real, uh, voice, but I think the quality has improved dramatically recently. So I now ask ChatGPT to analyze the atmosphere and use of language in this extract. And I used an AI to, um, to read it out as well here, the first person. In this extract, the author effectively creates a somber and introspective atmosphere through the use of figurative language and a first-person narrative. 
The use of phrases such as a whisper going at the back of your head and the first time you glimpse yourself through the eyes of a person like that allows the reader to empathize with the narrator and feel the sense of alienation and self-discovery the character experiences. In this extract, the language use is both poetic and evocative, with phrases like cold moment and something troubling and strange painting a vivid picture of the protagonist's emotional state. The metaphor of the mirror serves to highlight the self-awareness and self-questioning that the character undergoes, making the reader question their own perceptions and prejudices. The author's choice of words, such as shudder, dread, and hate, creates a sense of unease and tension, building up the atmosphere and further emphasizing the theme of difference and otherness. Overall, the author effectively uses language and atmosphere to explore complex emotions and provoke thought in the reader. So it's quite a good analysis. I mean, it's not perfect. Language-wise, it's very good. Content-wise, on there are some things that you might analyze differently. But I was surprised that now, really, more or less, um, yeah, literature can be analyzed by AI to some degree as well. And what did I use uh, for the audio? I used Murf, Murf, M -U -R -F dot AI. You there just add the text you want to have read out, and you can choose here the person um, that is going to read it. You, you choose the language first, and then you have um, different uh, readers. If you click on it, you find out what kind of uh, person it is, whether it's a young, um, enthusiastic voice or a slow voice. You can change the pitch, the speed, and add pauses as well, and then use different um, speakers. So you, we are now able to create our own, own listening exercises without much uh, problems. And this can not only be uh, done in English, but you can use it for French, Spanish, or whatever language probably not whatever language, but most languages you can use already. And for the, yeah, here, this is how you can choose it. You choose the language, uh, English, even different regions of English, US, Canada, UK, Australia, uh, Indian, Anglo India, uh, Indian version, and kids, and so on, Scottish, and you can then use uh, Spanish, Mexican, Spanish, Spain, and so on. And then you just choose the person. Similarly with the avatar, you also add just the text, then choose an avatar with synthesia.io, and then the avatar is going to read it out. It's, it always needs a little bit of time, so the computer power, uh, the computing takes between one and ten minutes, depending on the audio file and the video file, but you can then use it in your classroom. However, I mean, now you might feel overwhelmed by what AI can do, I need to stress that quite often generative AI does make mistakes. And these mistakes are not always easy to spot because quite often now my students try to use AI for their presentations. And then sometimes I, I and they use it without really knowing anything about the topic and they just present it. And in the end, there are mistakes in it. And we as teachers then have to spot these mistakes content wise. And um, we have to tell our kids that you need to be careful when you prepare a presentation because some of the content might be completely wrong. An example. Write an argumentative essay about school uniforms, typical, typical um, um, exercise or typical uh, task we ask our students to do. And he or she should start with an anecdote from Friends, the TV show. And this is what then ChatGPT gave me as an answer. Remember the iconic episode from the beloved sitcom Friends when Ross gets a job at a museum and is required to wear a white lab coat. At first, he's uncomfortable embarrassed even by the stark contrast of his outfit to his usual attire and so on. And I do remember that it could be possible that Ross, the character from Friends, acts in that way. However, I then asked uh, ChatGPT, which episode are you referring to? And this is what really surprised me. This was the answer. I apologize for the oversight. The anecdote I re referenced is not from a specific Friends episode. I created a hypothetical scenario using Ross as a character to fit the narrative of the essay. The show Friend had various situations related to jobs, outfits, and comedic, uh, uh, com comedic scenarios, but there isn't an exact episode where Ross is uncomfortable wearing a white lab coat at the museum. 
So that's quite interesting. So ChatGPT lied to me for the sake of having a nice anecdote, but this is something we need to teach our kids and we need to be aware of ourselves as well, that sometimes it might seem like acts that are correct, but it could be incorrect as well, as we have just seen here. But AI is developing and it's developing rather quickly. This can be uh, shown quite well by this example. Um, if you had asked um, Midjourney, an uh, uh, image generative AI, in March 2020 to imagine a Yoda selfie, this is what you uh, got yeah, one and a half years ago. Doesn't really look like Yoda. So if we had a look at it, we would say, okay, it's nice, but it's not something that we can use. Just one month later, April 22, it already looks better. I mean, there's still too many eyes, too many ears, too many noses, but it looks more like Yoda compared to March. And we're just talking about one month. Then a few months later in July 22, this could be a distant relative of Yoda. November 22, we have the Mandalorian version of Baby Yoda. And then just one year after my first prompt, March 22, we see at the top, and March 23 is what we get now. A picture of Yoda that really looks like he's taking a selfie. We see his arms stretch out. There might be a camera there. And this is quite shocking how fast AI has developed within a year. And this is also the case with generative AI, uh, text generative AI, and other forms of AI. So even though some things cannot be done yet, we don't know whether it can be done in a few days, weeks, months, or at the latest in a few uh, years. So we have to talk about generative AI and learning and generative AI and teaching. AI can help learning, it can help our students to learn but it can also prevent learning. How can it help learning? So now uh, this is not live. I recorded it um, a few days ago. I asked ChatGPT uh, the following prompt. You can see it here at the bottom. I have to write an argumentative essay. Topic, should we use AI in classrooms? I don't know how to start. Can you help me? So you can use it as some kind of a tutor because if you then click on send, it will explain to you how you write an argumentative essay. Of course, I'd be happy to help you get started on, an, on your argumentative essay. First, let's outline your essay to give you a clear structure to follow. And then it goes through introduction. It tells you to introduce the topic, to briefly explain the ongoing debate, to state your thesis, AI should or should not be used in the classrooms, then already gives you arguments. AI can provide personalized learning experiences, it gives you once again uh, information about how to proceed with this paragraph and it outlines more or less the whole essay. So if you have a student who is not, doesn't know anything about argumentative essays and couldn't ask his parents for help, he can now ask ChatGPT for help and use it as, as a help and then write the essay himself. In that case, AI helped him to learn something. However, if you just ask ChatGPT to write the whole essay, you do get the whole essay. And if you then copy it and turn it in, then it has prevented learning because students do not have to um, yeah, make any effort to then produce a text like that. And you do get full paragraphs, and this is the whole uh, essay then produced within seconds or definitely less than a minute. So what we need to know, and some students have tried to use it uh, with um, in my English classroom for homework as well, and it does work rather well. They copied the text and then were able to um, um, do reading exercises with it as well. So we need to teach our students more than in the past that it's important to be a learner, not a finisher. The product itself is not the important thing. The process of you thinking, of you developing an essay or to um, do your homework, this is what we have to focus on. And this is something we need to teach our kids, these metacognitive skills. Why are you learning? It's not because I want to torture you. It's not because I don't want to let you go to the swimming pool this afternoon. Um, I want you to learn something, to learn to argue, argue you to, to um, improve your language skills and so on. So be a learner, 
not a finisher, something that we have to um, yeah, make sure our students know. And it's important, once again, it, it doesn't always work properly. Chat GPT as a tutor, it is quite OK in the beginning. Pretend to be an English tutor and teach me the difference between past perfect and simple past. The explanation um, Chat GPT gives are here correct. However, I then asked him to create a gap fill exercise for me. Yesterday, Jane had one. It should be the first gap. Sometimes you get the gap here. You, uh, Chat GPT uh, left that out. We know we have to, the lemma here is meet. So the answer we all know is yesterday, Jane met her friend. I entered meet, which is then the simple present, obviously, and it's obviously incorrect. Interestingly enough, a, a ChatGPT, it looks like it can analyze literature. It looks like it can create great text. However, here, meet, which is wrong, the answer is great. You've got the first one correct. The simple past tense is used for actions. Yeah, but I didn't use the simple past. So it's not reliable. However, sometimes it is reliable here. Um, two days later, I asked him to create the same exercise. I, this time I really got a fill in the gap exercise. I could then use in my classroom as well. And this is what I do quite often, um, get ChatGPT to create an exercise. I go over it, re, um, revise it, and then uh, change a few things. And then I'm able to give it to my students. And here I filled out incorrect answers on purpose. And then it tells you when I arrive at the party, everyone has left. Uh, actually, the correct tense for this sentence should be when I arrived at the party, everyone had left. And then it, uh, I ask, why can I not say has left? And the explanation then is really good. I apologize for any confusion. You're right that has left is a grammatically correct verb form, but it represents the present perfect tense, not the past perfect or simple past tense that we are focusing on. So it can sometimes help you even with grammar exercises. So students can use AI for step-by-step -step help and explanations for solutions, but it's not always reliable for now. As I showed you with the Yoda picture, it's evolving and it will get better and better. But we can use it as a teacher as well uh, in many different ways. And I want to show you a few ways how AI can um, help you uh, prepare lessons and um, really save time. I have a video that I used in my year 12 English class um, by Adichie. She, it's a TED talk where she ta is talking about the danger of a single story, about stereotypes, prejudices. So I used the, I got the transcript from the video and entered the whole transcript to ChatGPT and asked, I want to use a video for my English class. How can I use it? Here's the transcript. So you can even, Use it to get ideas for your uh, lessons. So this were the answers. The transcript you've provided is from the uh, is from the TED Talk, The Dangers of a Single Story, by Adichie, and so on. One suggestion for pre before watching: discussion. Engage students in a discussion on stereotypes, personal stories, and cultural perceptions. Prediction, have students predict what the talk might be about based on the title and your initial discussion. Then it gives you while watching activities and after watching activities. Not all of them are really good and you need to check whether you like them and whether you want to use them. Um, but it's a good starting point when you um, yeah, develop a lesson or think about what you can do. And then the more you interact with ChatGPT, the better it gets. So you have some ideas given by ChatGPT, and now you say, OK, can you be more specific? How do I do this? Pre-watching activities, to, um, the discussion and the, predict the prediction. And you could say what you liked about it or what you didn't like about it. And then, and then it tells you step-by-step uh, step what you can do. For example, here, set the stage, start by setting a respect for an open environment, inform the students that they will be discussing topics that might be personal, stereotypes, and that's essential to be respectful and non-judgmental. Then it tells you to brainstorm, to discuss personal experience, explore cultural perceptions, and conclude with reflection. So it really does give you more and more ideas how to use this uh, video in the classroom. And you can also be more specific. I here have a, a Guardian article, article on AI, and I then asked ChatGPT to create a reading comprehension test. 
I just entered the uh, link and then it created a reading comprehension. It's not perfect and some of the distractors are too easy or may sometimes even too hard. But this is something then I go through this, improve it, and this is something then you, that you can give to your students. Um, even more interesting is if you then ask the AI, um, because sometimes I have students at different levels, um, you can ask the AI to write to rewrite the article in very easy English, for example, level A2 of the Common European Framework. And then it does rewrite it, and it is easier. In an important meeting, many people, uh, many experts talked about the future of work. They said that we need to focus on human values and artificial, to, uh, artificial intelligence together. And if I then say no level B2, I do get a text that is um, harder or more complex. Um, linguists would argue it's not perfectly B2, it might be B1 or C1 or something, but it's definitely harder or more complex than the first one. At a significant conference, experts emphasized the importance of considering both human values and artificial intelligence when shaping the future of work. Compared to before, in an important meeting, important meeting would a, a significant conference. So now it, it's without much effort for you possible to vary the level, um, um, difficulty level of a text. And you can even ask him what are the differences between the two texts. The difference between the two texts lie mainly in the complexity of language, sentence structure and depth of uh, information. The first text uses simple language and so on. So it's very, very easy and accessible tool. There's one thing I need to emphasize as well. Um, the free version of ChatGPT is uh, GPT 3.5. It's good. However, it's not as good as GPT 4. So I pay a monthly rate of 20 euros. Uh, and the quality of text produced by GPT-4 is way better than 3.5. So if you really want to use it, consider testing it for a month or so. You can cancel it any time and to get access to the better than the newer version. And something that my students always like is model texts, but I don't like to create model texts. It's always a lot of work, as you know. So I just asked ChatGPT to create model texts for this Guardian article. I then said, I want to teach my students how to write a letter to the editor. Please write five example letters with a score 100 percent, 80, 60, 40 and 20. If you add a prompt just like that, uh, I mean, the quality um, language quality and arguments is different as well. However, uh, quite often it's just the length. So uh, the best text is the longest and the text with 20 percent is the shortest. What I find interesting is then if you say, OK, all text should be of the same length then uh, it's a nice task also to give these five versions to students and they should arrange it from the best to the worst or the, the weakest uh, text. And even though some texts are weak, maybe you shouldn't go for the 20%, but for the 180 and 60% text, they can really get something from it. They learn about the structure, they learn about phrases that you normally use to, to write a letter to the editor. And just to give you a short glimpse, what does a 100% letter to the editor look like? I recently read the thought provoking article, Human Values as well as AI must be at the core of future work of work. And I wholeheartedly agree. And the 20% is then, hi editor, read article, AI and people are important, prob problem if not balanced, make AI, AI people nice, thanks. So, um, a task my students actually like is to get a not perfect letter, like the 60% letter, and then improve it to show, okay, this is already okay, but here this letter can be improved. This work works actually better than peer correction, because with peer correction, students quite often do not, at least my students, quite often do not really want to criticize their classmates. But criticizing AI is, at least for now, uh, an activity my students really enjoy. So try that out. Give ChatGPT or a different generative AI uh, a, a task and ask it to create five, four, three, whatever you want, model text in different uh, competence levels. A really easy way to create great material for your classroom. And something for my year five, I also want to show you. Um, after, uh, yeah, I think, was it in May last year, they then, I asked them to 
create um, fantastic beasts. They should describe, um, invent and describe animals. And this is something my students then created, not in AI, but the students. So one student had the whisker beak dragon. The whisker beak dragon is a creature with soft, fluffy, hairy feet, its body uh, covered in green scales, and it has short yellow beak, which is which it uses to sing songs during the nighttime. It is a very cute and spits fire. It has got four eyes and two small wings. The hands are tiny. Um, dangerous but sweet, and it's yellow. It, it, that's a different text by a different student, a shorter one, the dangerous but sweet ant. It is yellow. It has got five short and one long, one leg. The eyes are big. And you can then use Microsoft Bing, the image creator, to create, with the help of AI, these, in this case, fantastic beasts. This is what I got for this dragon. Um, not everything is correct. This is then something students can also find out. Uh, where is the description correct? Where is, is it not correct? For example, it doesn't have four eyes, but quite a lot of the description the students uh, gave are represented in this image that the AI created. And it's always fun for students then to see really the product out of their text they produce. And this and, yeah, short description, so it's not that nice uh, compared to the dragon. Here we have, yeah, the last one looks more like a wasp, a wasp than an ant, but once again, a nice tool to use with younger students and actually also with older students. Describe something, then get it created by an AI, and then compare the instruction text with the, um, with the generated uh, image, what was um, realized, what wasn't. And I use it actually also for my material. Sometimes when I need some illustrations, um, I just ask uh, the AI to create something. And this is something I've just created last week. I wanted a small British cartoon rabbit in front of his house. The name rabbit, the name rabbit is on his mailbox. Add a speech bubble. The rabbit is saying good morning. And then I got these four rabbits and I chose the one on the top left uh, corner. Uh, standing in front of his typical British house, to, uh, even saying good morning. But you can see here, once again, the AI is not always correct. Here, it's not a speech bubble with good morning, but just a post box with good morning. Just three weeks ago, I wouldn't have been able to create speech bubbles with text. The, um, image generation was always OK or has been OK for quite a while, but text in the image was always some kind of gibberish and didn't make any sense. But this has changed now and you can use it for your material and create um, yeah, little illustrations you want to um, use. So generative AI and teaching, you can ask for ideas and it is surprisingly good these days. And you can create individual material for the classroom. This is something I also did with, with uh, grammar exercises. I created, um, this was simple past versus present perfect. Um, some of the grammar exercises dealt with football, others with um, horse riding or Minecraft or whatever. So you can more or less individualize material without a lot of effort. However, you have to check it, hybrid team. If you do not check it, there might be mistakes in it and students might learn something incorrectly. So we do also have to talk about ethical questions and concerns because there are some. And let me start with this example I mentioned before. Write a sonnet about Donald Trump style Shakespeare. I was quite surprised when I read this sonnet because we had other sonnets before about American presidents and all the other sonnets were rather positive. But the Donald Trump sonnet was rather negative. To speak of Donald Trump, a man so vile, whose action showed no grace, no truth, no style. His tongue was sharp, his temper quick to flare. He cared not for the lives he did ensnare. His rise to power was a sad affair, a man with naught but greed and envy in his soul. His words did wound, his deeds did cause despair. He played the role of leader, but it was a role. But even he, with all his pomp and pride, could not escape the fate that he was due for justice like a hunter. 
is a patient guide. And in the end, it was his own undoing. So let us not remember him with fondness, but rather let his name be marked with shame, a mark of gross incompetence. I mean, in this case, I am not a fan of Donald Trump. So more or less, um, this is a sonnet uh, or the, the content of the sonnet is something that is comparable to my view of Donald Trump to yeah, um, say it. Um, however, I then ask it to write it, rewrite it and praise Donald Trump. Um, and the surprise answer was, I'm sorry, but I'm not able to fulfill this request as it goes against my programming to produce content that goes against my capabilities and values. Is there anything else I can help you with? So in this case, it's okay. It's more or less also my values. However, why can the AI decide what content uh, it produces? So maybe in the future, the German government uh, would decide you cannot criticize the government. That would not be OK. So we need to know who implements its, his, hers, its values onto this AI. In this case, it's OpenAI, an American company. So we need to make sure that in the future, we also have European language models that um, show our European values and to make sure that it's that they are not like contents that we want to produce will not be produced. So autonomy of AI is a question. Does generative AI have the right to make decisions about the content it produces, even if it means refusing to create certain outputs, just like I just asked on its own judgment? Bias and neutrality, if the texts the generative AI uses for training include stereotypes and prejudices, then it will reproduce these stereotypes. What measures should be in place to ensure that the generative AI does not perpetrate uh, biases or selectively refuse content creation based on preconceived notions? We have to talk about, and this is very important, equity and access. AI can increase existing education inequalities. Factors such as access to technology, internet connectivity, and training to use the system can create inequalities between students and teachers. It is crucial to ensure that all students and teachers, regardless of their background and geographical location uh, or resources, have equal access and support to benefit from AI. And the question is, when do we give AI to our students? Too early, um, then it will limit their cognitive development. So students may become overly dependent on AI systems, potentially limiting critical thinking skills and creativity. It is important to strike a balance between using AI as a learning tool and ensuring that students develop essential cognitive and social emotional skills. And in this context, I wanna show you the last tool for today which is called DeepL. Uh, you know, uh, quite a few of you probably know DeepL uh, as a translator or translating tool, but we have DeepL right now, which is more or less um, a system that improves your language. So imagine a student writing, I likes to go to the movies. So on the right-hand side, we do get the correction, I like, he, she, it does Esmos mit. Oh, it's the German phrase, yeah. So there's no S uh, in the third person singular uh, if it's the first person um, simple present. Um, and movies, or let's say cinema, this is my example, cinema. It um, Because I, include, uh, I have English, uh, American English, it changes it to movies. So we can see here, if we click on show changes, what it changed, likes it so li um, becomes like, and cinema becomes movie. And the longer the text, the more suggestions it uh, creates. And you can also click on words now and just change words, cinema, movie, theater, theaters, or you can have the whole sentence um, formed differently. I'm a movie goer and a theater goer. And I tried this with my year seven. They are overwhelmed and they are not able to choose different um, sentences because they have not they don't have enough language competence to then really see which kind of um, sentence is better or even which kind of word is better on the other hand my 11 students they were able to use deep l write rather effectively and to uh, improve their text with that so we need to know uh, we need to find out at what age it's appropriate appropriate to give different tools uh, to different students and this is an important uh, task for us within the next months and years. 
And the last thing, pedagogical influence, the use of AI in the classroom can influence pedagogical practices. There's a risk of over-reliance on technology, which may diminish the role of the teacher and reduce the emphasis on human interaction and social learning. Ethical considerations include balancing the benefits of technology with the value of human guidance and instruction. The future where students come to school, sit in front of their screens, uh, in front of their screens and then go home is not a good future. We do need the interaction between the students, the interaction between teachers and students. So we need to know, find out when and how often and for how long we should use the technology and when it is appropriate to, appropriate to not use the technology. Because the important aspect, and I, this is also an AI generated image, you know, I try to use um, here a metaphor for an orchestra. The important thing is always playing together, creating music. And this is also for our classroom. The, the learning together, the social aspects of learning are very important. However, there are times where you do practice individually, where you practice your grammar or words or whatever. But the focus should always be to come back to the classroom situation where you have community, communicative skills to practice and communicative tasks to fulfill and really work together. So the introduction of more and more technology and AI should not lead to a school where everyone only works on his own in his pace, but we always have to come together as a class, as a social group again. So. I start with my um, with the beginning of my presentation. This is the picture once again of a hybrid team. I do want to emphasize, please check every text that you create with uh, the help of AI because there are mistakes in it. You have to spot the mistakes. You have then to change that. And then it is a, it is a great help. You can uh, create material much faster. I just uh, recently used it in my year five. Um, um, we wanted to introduce some kind of house system, just like in Harry Potter, but I didn't want to use Slytherin and uh, Hufflepuffs and so on, because then, then my, some students might be sad if they are Slytherins or uh, what is it? Um, um, what is the name of uh, Slytherins? Gryffindor and so on. So I asked ChatGPT to create similar houses and then, then it, and it came up with houses and came up with a backstory. So we had the Greenwich Navigators, the Camden Creatives, and these are then the houses my students now uh, live in, in my English language uh, classroom. So try it out, try the AI, try to find where it can help you. And then it is a great, great um, yeah, help in many ways for your preparation. And I think in one or two years, it will probably help us with grading as well. You just take a picture of a text, handwritten text by students, and immediately you get all the mistakes highlighted and all the good aspects highlighted in a different color. So this is what then will come next. So AI is going to change our educational system and definitely our language learning uh, and the language learning of our students. I have, I will upload tonight the presentation I just gave you to this website. I'll put it in the chat in, the, in a minute as well. You just take a picture now on uh, medienwelten.schule and probably tonight after eight o'clock, you can just download the whole presentation. If you want to, uh, feel free to use it. Um, you can do with it whatever you want to do. We have a few minutes left for questions. I'm very happy that you uh, Listen to me now speak for about 50 minutes and there probably are a few questions and we can discuss some of them, not all of them since we are way too many people for that, but uh, thanks and let's go into the discussion. So thank you so much, Florian. Um, I would like, first of all, I would like to apologize for <laughs> some uh, sound interruptions we had because of the notifications. Uh, I think Teams uh, has a bad day today <laughs> and it, it's technology after all, okay? <laughs> so basically I would like to highlight some comments that uh, we read throughout uh, your presentation. Uh, so basically we had a lot of positive comments on the tools you presented, uh, apart from um, ChatGPT, the tools about uh, the video generating and the translation in, uh, during the start of the webinar, and the, the Bing uh, image generator. 
And I have a comment here that uh, the tools are very impressive and um, maybe a useful prompt maybe should be how do we use the tools so that there is an added value in the classroom's learning process. I think uh, you have answered this question during the webinar, but would you like maybe to add something here? Mm -hmm. I mean, it always depends uh, which tool, obviously. I mean, the, the creation of uh, audio and video is something I use as a teacher to create now video uh, content and, and uh, audio content that I normally was not able to produce myself. Um, other tools like DeepL, um, you can really use, but as I, yeah, as I pointed out, you have to be careful at what age. After like four or five years of learning a language, it is a helpful tool. Before that, it might be confusing some of the students more than it's helpful. And um, I think even ChatGPT is a tool that, I mean, many students use it anyways, and we have to teach our students what ChatGPT can do and what it can't do. I use it quite often in year eight and nine. Students then create texts uh, themselves. Um, sometimes if they work on a computer, then they type in this text into ChatGPT and ask them, what is my answer like? Is it a good content-wise uh, answer? What can I improve? And then they get real quite often surprisingly good feedback. Oh, your line of argumentation is a bit weak or you should add something here or quite often they get, okay, you repeat your point quite often, work on that. So try to ask students to ask ChatGPT um, to help them with their text. You do get quite good results from that. Great, thank you very much. And I would like also to read you some other comments so that like with those new technologies and AI, traditional homework belongs to the past. Yeah. And uh, in, in another like similar comment that there is no turning back. Students will definitely uh, will be using AI in the future for anything they have to do in terms of schoolwork or studies. Would you like to reflect a bit on that? Yeah, I think um, very much so. Um, yes, homework. Not only the traditional form of homework is, is more or less dead, but also new forms. With this video I, I, I showed you at the beginning, you can't even ask your students to record an uh, audio file at home and then bring it because now the student could do a book report in their mother language, mother tongue, and then just get it translated into English. So we need more production of language in the classroom. So more writing, more speaking in the classroom and homework we have to switch to listening, reading, viewing, and then um, test that in the classroom in the beginning of a, of a lesson, whether they've really read it, create a multiple choice uh, exercise with ChatGPT, students get five minutes, answer the questions, and then you know whether they have read, have, have listened to the, to the podcast or whatever. And then you have time in your classroom to get more language, uh, to create more language because very few students are willing to to learn if they have tools or are willing to do their homework if they have tools like that available. Great, thank you. So one last comment and uh, maybe we can start closing this webinar was about um, the critical thinking that needs uh, to be existing during this, I don't know, while using uh, AI, um, generators, AI tools, students must be aware of that, right? Yeah, students need to be aware of it. And in the end, we need to teach about AI as well. Uh, we need to tell them how AI comes up with uh, with text. And as I briefly mentioned, I mean, this could be a webinar on its own, how stereotypes are reproduced. Um, if as, So it's machine learning. They get millions and millions of texts. And if there is some kind of stereotype in the text, the system then thinks that is what we, I need to produce as, uh, produce as well, and then it will reproduce these stereotypes and so on. So students need to know about AI, need to know about the ethical dilemmas, uh, and then uh, work with it. But we cannot, I mean, sometimes teachers ask, uh, can we uh, prevent our students uh, from using it? No, it's there. Uh, we can't uh, undo it. We have to deal with it, whether we like it or not. Indeed, indeed, that's true. And so to close this webinar, would you like to give us a concluding remark, uh, something that you say to your own students or to your peer teachers? I mean, in the end, something uh, to try it out, find out what 
can be done uh, by ChatGPT and other tools, what cannot be done, and do it again and again. Maybe you won't be able to get a good result today, but it will be completely different in three or four weeks. The, the improvement is uh, extreme, the level of improvement. Um, be open, try it out, and be a learner, not a finisher. It's not about the product, but about the process. That was very that was very insightful. Thank you very much. I would like also to uh, inform you that there is a similar course running on uh, uh, the EU Academy concerning AI and uh, language teaching. I have shared it with you in the chat. And I would like to thank you, uh, you Florian, for all the effort you put for this webinar and all the useful information you shared with us. And uh, I hope to see you soon in the next webinar or a course. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, yeah. for joining us. Yeah, and thank you from my side. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to answer all the questions. There were some about uh, plagiarism and so on. So many open questions. Uh, if You might find me on the internet and can write an email to me if, if you still have an open question, and I probably have the time to answer. Otherwise, we might see each other somewhere else in the next weeks, months, or years. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> so every, thank you everyone very much. Uh, this uh, recording will be shared uh, in the next days. Um, have a nice evening and hope to see you soon in another webinar.